Grumpy Old Geeks, a weekly talk show hosted by Brian Schulmeister and Jason DeFilippo discussing the finer points of what went wrong on the internet and who's to blame. If you dig the show and want to support us, please go to patreon.com slash GOG and share the love. Even a buck a month helps us out and earns our undying love and admiration and also helps me pay for nappies for the fruit of my loins. And if you're interested in advertising on the show, please drop us a line at podcast at grumpyoldgeeks.com and we'll get you our ad rates toot sweet. And the following content contains naughty language, so put your kids back in the box unless you want them to grow up being fully functional adults. Welcome to Grumpy Old Geeks, episode 181 for October 14th, 2016. I'm Jason DeFilippo here with my co-host. Brian Schulmeister. <laughs> you do that was a long... I got, I got to redo that so I can breathe. <laughs> yeah, you got to do some more cardio if you want to make it through all those lines in a row. If I'm doing cardio, that means I have to leave my house and leaving my house just gets me sick. I got the oh, sniffles. Yes. yes, I'm sorry. You, you, you poor little flower, you. I am. I'm weak. <clears throat> I'm weak. Uh, speaking of weak, uh, so I ended up with an iPhone 7. Weak. <laughs> Did total... you get the regular 7 or the 7 Plus? I got the regular 7 because I'm still not down with having the gigantic phone thing. Oh, but it's um, got the cameras, those cameras. I oh. don't care. Oh, I figured yeah. you would care because you have the fruit of your loins. <laughs> the camera from my iPhone 6S was taking good enough photos for me of the fruit of my loins okay. uh, and also my loins occasionally. Oh, that, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. What, what has been mentally seen cannot be unseen. That's a different story. Uh. Um, no, I mean, the my phone basically just crapped out on me, so I didn't have much of a choice, sadly. Um, but I definitely like... <laughs> You know, this whole chasing the rabbit's tail thing with these upgrades, it, it's got to be slowing down and stopping. I really can't tell a goddamn difference between my 6S and the 7. I, it's faster. It's a little smaller. Theoretically, it has a much better camera. But I don't need this phone. I didn't want this phone. I'm sad that I had to pay to get to this phone. Yeah, that's the hard part right there <laughs> is paying for it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you know, there you go. There, there's my review of the iPhone 7. It's nice, but so was my 6. <laughs> yeah, that's the funny thing. I've got the 6 Plus, not the 6S Plus, you know, mm -hmm. and it works fine, except for mm -hmm. the fact that it doesn't work. <laughs> that's the only problem because yeah, that, that's the catch there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, because of the flaw in the logic board where the since it's bent, the chips popped off for the touch recognition. So I have to turn it off and on all the all day long. But uh, be, besides that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> besides that, Mrs. Lincoln, how was the play? Um, yeah, if it worked, I would just keep this. For the you know the foreseeable future, but now yep. I have to buy a new one. I'm thinking of just going with the 6s plus because it's going to yeah, be cheaper. I, I you know having lived with the seven for a couple days, I if I could go back in time, I suppose I actually could. I suppose I got 14 if days. If I could turn back time, <sighs> so many things that cannot be unseen or unheard. <laughs> right now. Hey um, man, you, you you talk about your junk. I'm busting out some share. <laughs> I'm just saying I would go back and in two seconds I would get the six instead of the seven. I, okay. There really is no reason to have it. Well, then take it back. Get a cheaper phone. I'm, I might. I might do that. Damn it. Yeah. I'm, I'm lazy. So I did not get the new watch. I'm still rocking my uh, Apple Watch 1. Because right. the interesting thing is the watch is the one thing that they made thicker <laughs> when they come <laughs> out with a new one. And uh, I don't need GPS. I, I, I still I'm a huge fan of my Apple Watch. I use it mm -hmm. all the time. I love it. The problem is now with the new Watch OS 3. Every single day, it, mm -hmm. it just pops up the little Apple like it's restarting and locks yep. every oh. day. And I have to force restart it. All right. So annoying. I love the new watch faces, though. It's like it's got everything on it. It's like, you know, control panel for my wrist. But the fact that it just stops working halfway through the day, every single day <laughs> when the battery is well over 50 percent. This isn't like, you know, I'm running out of juice type of thing. I'm at like yeah. 60, 70 percent on juice and it just stops working. That is, that is a fundamental flaw in your product, Tim cook. That does seem to be a problem. I mean, I I've got to say I've been crapping on the watch since they released it. But, uh, when I was at the Apple store, uh, replacing my damn phone, the watch area was very, very busy. A lot of people taking a look at them. So who knows? It's funny. I see them all in the wild a lot. Now, a lot of people right. have them. It's surprising. I was, I was actually, every time I see one, I'm very surprised. I'm like, Oh, you uh, got one too. Sucker. <laughs> Sucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, uh, I, we are I, all, we are all victims of the sunk cost fallacy, but I, I actually do like it. It does. It does save me some pulling out of the giant phone from my pocket, which maybe I should do that more and it won't get bent next time. Maybe, maybe. 
Uh, I found an article that I think basically encapsulates our show in a nutshell. Another one? Damn. Yeah, another one. Yes, this is off of Recode. It's called, I'm done pretending that Silicon Valley tech is visionary. I think we were done five years ago with that, weren't we? <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. I started coding in 1994 <laughs> professionally, so I'm thinking 1993 is when <laughs> when the thing went to shit. But uh, uh, yeah. So what, what are some is- of the main points of this one? I'm curious. It's just a big, long article kind of from an insider saying, you know, we are all so smart, yet we do nothing good. Uh, (laughs) That's really what it comes down to. I'll read two choice paragraphs here. Um, Silicon Valley is filled with intelligent, capable minds that are constantly looking for ways to exploit markets and seize windows of opportunity. Business is business. I love having new products. But first, convince me that another best way to send money to my friend's app that isn't PayPal, Venmo, or Google Wallet is actually necessary. It's not. Not (laughs) It's not. Not to mention that money transfer through Apple Pay could launch at any moment, and we would still have to compete with Facebook Pay, Snapcash, and Squarecash for relevance. Right now, entrepreneurs aren't trying to fix things that aren't broken. And we can all name a lot of things that are broken. Healthcare, education, homelessness, poverty, food waste, climate change, etc. These aren't even small market problems. There is so much room for people with good ideas to make change and probably make some good money while they're at it. Amen, brother. Yeah, those are actually hard problems, though. Sending money to somebody is not a hard problem. So, ergo, yeah, you, you go for you, the... Yeah. You can't just build an app. Uh, this the, everybody wants the low-hanging fruit to become a unicorn, you know? So... Mm-hmm. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Let me well, let me snap. Yeah, let me snap cash in my balls. In the news. In sad news and technology, uh, Dennis Ritchie, the father of C and co-developer of Unix, has died. Aww. Yeah, he's a smart dude. Very smart dude, and uh, a lot of the stuff that we use every day came from his brain. So thank Cur- you, Dennis, and you will be missed. Curly brackets everywhere. <laughs> Just for you, buddy. Uh, in funny news, Hillary Clinton's Wikipedia page has been vandalized with pornographic images and pro-Trump messaging. And I noticed that I pasted pro-Trump message <laughs> into uh, into uh, our little note-taking system for our show, and it turned it into a little happy poo. Uh, so are you using one of the uh, the Chrome filters that we'll be talking about later? I am not. You know what it is? I am. <laughs> so every mention of Trump in our show notes has been turned into a poop emoji <laughs> because I'm funny. running it and then it auto saves it. I was wondering if you guys were going to see that or not. That's yep, awesome. Yep. Yes. Pro poop message. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. And um, stunning, you know, because they aren't baskets of deplorables. This is, uh, you know, more than just a clever little Wikipedia change where you like change their de- death date to like 10 years ago. This is straight up. Uh, lots of words I'm not going to say on this show, even though we're a yeah, an explicit show um, that involve rape and, and all kinds of really, really bad things. So well done, uh, poop fans. Yeah. Fans well of poop. Well, yes. Showing your class yet again. Yeah. And uh, I, I went to go look at the image, but it's uh, been blurred. So I can't. Looks Sorry. very, looks very saucy. <laughs> yes. Uh, sauce is used. <laughs> much sauce <laughs> so everybody knows the galaxy note 7 is no more it has Thank ceased God. to be it is pining for the fjords and well uh, sort of people are basically having to be cajoled into turning theirs in <laughs> yeah i don't know what's going on with that uh, let's let's keep a bomb in our house <laughs> okay. i know let's just say i'm happy i'm not going on a flight anytime soon because i don't want to be next to one of these idiots that hasn't given up their phone yet yeah no doubt and I love how the fireproof box is what they sent back to, to return them. <laughs> and the giant stickers like, do not put this on an airplane. <laughs> yeah, there's all kinds of, of different ways to return your phone. If you have not done so yet, please do so. If you bought it directly from them, Samsung is sending out fireproof return boxes, which alone lets you know how ridiculous this is. Uh, and they are actually now offering uh, Note 7 users or uh, owners up to $100 in credit to return their phones because, you know, these things are blowing up. So if we can't just get you to come re- return your phone because you're concerned about it blowing up your penis in your pocket, <laughs> we will give you $100 to make sure that that doesn't happen yeah you know what you don't deserve a penis if you uh <laughs> need to get bribed to take your penis bomb away from you <laughs> and uh at that no way implies that only males would use the galaxy note 7 that's true that's true <laughs> which really sucks though is that you know as i was thinking about you know we were talking about the phones you know mm-hmm. i was I, i've been contemplating a switch over to android because it's like you know most of the apps that i have now are 
cross compatible. Like there's an Android version of just about everything. I don't yeah. use anything that is, you know, Apple specific almost on my phone. It's all cloud based. And I'm like, oh, now's actually a good chance. And when the Note 7 came out, I checked it out and it looks like a really nice phone. Except yeah. for the part where it blows your balls off. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Too bad. Too bad. Poor Samsung. Poor Samsung. Sucks to be them right now. Also sucks but, to be Comcast right now. It's always sucked to be Comcast. Yeah, just ask anybody that works there that you have to call when your shit don't work. <laughs> or anybody that has their shit. <laughs> yep. Uh, many hours again this week, but uh, neither here nor there. They have been hit with a $2.3 million fine, which is 0. .06 seconds of income for them. So it's not yeah, really that much. big a deal uh, for a practice known as negative option billing which is when you sign mm -hmm. up and they give you HBO free for a month and yep. then charge you the next month without telling you that you're going to get charged. A lot of people have had this happen to them. And the great part about it, when it usually happens, if you get on the phone and call them and say, you motherfuckers, I did not ask you to pay for, or give me this and I'm not going to pay for it. And what happens is you get another month for free. Then they bill you again. Then you get back on the phone. So you can, you can <laughs> theoretically get HBO free for the rest of your life if you get on this loop. But uh, yeah, they got busted for it. Good for, good. good for the uh, FCC. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so one of the few times we'll say, yay, FCC. The only, the only thing about it is I don't, I'm, I'm like, why don't you smack them for more money? But then I'm thinking about it and I'm like, no, because then my bill would go up. So Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. It's not like uh, it's not like they're not going to recoup all that money. They're going to pass it along to us, the consumer. Yes. They will be providing positive option billings. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Even though I don't get cable, I'm still going to pay for this problem. Ah. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. Uh, Amazon. Okay. You know, we joked yes. about them opening up bookstores and we thought it was the yes. douchiest move in the universe. Yes. Now they're going to start opening convenience stores. Ah. Okay. I, All right. here's the thing, man. It's like, they're just, they're going to be everywhere. We just have to get used to it. Amazon is going to be everywhere. They're going to put everyone out of business and we're yeah. all going to work for Amazon at some point. Yeah. Let me tell you what Amazon has actually done. We used to, we used to decry the, the, the death of the small mom and pop shops on main street. Mm -hmm. They're making me feel bad for Seven Eleven. I know. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> This is how bad Amazon is getting. It's not even mom and pop shops that we're worried about anymore. It's longstanding international businesses that are getting killed by Amazon. They're making us feel bad for soulless, heartless conglomerations. <laughs> exactly. That's how bad Amazon has gotten. And you know what? I still ordered something from Amazon yesterday, so I'm not putting my money where my mouth is. I had five boxes show up from Amazon today. I got shoes. I got a shower curtain. I got dog toys. Uh, I got... <laughs> Uh, cables. I got tons of stuff from them today. So you know what? We are digging. We, the, are, we're, we're, we, we are. We are. We are the blame. problem. Yeah. Yeah. We are the problem. Well, uh, if you want to sell half that shit that you just got delivered from Amazon, uh, there's more talk about the Facebook's new Craigslist competitor talking about again another big business that is running everybody else out. Everything is either going to be Facebook or Amazon in the near future. Well, That's I know. It. I know. I can get panties locally sourced. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, this 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 article actually uh, said, makes a good case that uh, Facebook's new Craigslist competitor should be a little bit debauched because if you want to take over Craigslist, that's where the fun stuff is, and you've got to offer that too. Otherwise, nobody's ever going to use you, and they're all just going to stick with Craigslist. Yeah, where's the poontang section? I'm telling you. Like, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. That's <laughs> a, that, that's what Craigslist was for: missed connections and poontang. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't really get why Facebook is actually moving into this space anyways. It's such a weird nothing for them. Because but, they uh, have to provide shareholders their value. That's all right, why. so we have to keep loading on bloatware onto something that is already just doing quite well in and of itself. <laughs> yeah. Okay, they, great. They, they want all the monies that they can get from Amazon. Because <laughs> yeah, okay, yes. yeah, all the employees have to go shop at Amazon, so <laughs> they need to make more money. Yeah, well, speaking of the next thing that Facebook has now launched, uh, they've launched place, fa their competitor for Slack, basically, Workplace, which uh, has been around for a while. It was called Facebook at Work, and it was internal and in beta testing. It is now out in the wild for everyone to use. So if you are used to something like Slack, which I rather enjoy, it beats the hell out of 7,000 email chains. It's a nice way to work with other people. Uh, but Facebook does not ever want you to leave their eco structure, so they have their version now. Yeah, uh, there's a, the problem yeah. with this is, and, and this this is why I like Slack. Everything's in order. <laughs> so <laughs> if Facebook is going to start applying the algorithm about what it thinks I should be working on first, then yeah, they can bite is... me, bite my ass. 
<laughs> that is an interesting. I didn't even think about that. I'm assuming that they don't. It has to be in order because otherwise they're kind of messing with the company's internal business structure. Yeah, but it's Facebook, so you never know. They might say, yeah. "Hey, you know what?" Uh, we've looked at this and we've run it through our AI algorithms, and we think that actually you should not be working on that logo first, but you should be uh, changing the design for the homepage <laughs> first. Um, and when right. you're done with that, then you know we think you should go clean the toilets, and then when you're done with that, then you can do the logo. But well, you've got it completely wrong. You don't know how to do your job. We know best. It is not a free service. They are charging for it. And the reason for this that they're stating is this an advertisement-free service, which means they're keeping their AI so far out of the product. Yeah, we'll so, see. So yeah, we'll see about that. Because uh, Slack's not cheap. You know, we run Slack at work, and it it's pricey per year per user. So you have to actually be somewhat important on our team to actually get on Slack <laughs> with us. Um, yeah. Because it, it. Well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's free for me, but I'm only in, you know, on three different companies that are like five people and less. So I haven't paid a dime, and it's fantastic. Yeah, but I'm in a company. I, we've got twenty some odd users for uh, my day job, and. There are some people who are just like, you know what? You're only good enough for email. So that's that's what you get. <laughs> yeah, we're not we're not going to pay for you. You get email. Yeah. Uh, so there's a, another Uber water option coming into life. I think we talked about this. Uh, there was one in Amsterdam that they were trying to do. Oh, they were, uh, no, they, that was uh, autonomous boats. No, that's, autonomous that's what it was. Okay. It wasn't it wasn't the Uber for boats. It was the autonomous boats. <laughs> well, this is an Uber for boats, but they've already sta stated that they basically plan to eventually go, assuming they make it at all autonomous as well. They don't want drivers. Of course. It's called sea, sea bubbles. Tiny bubbles. <laughs> tiny bubbles. They're electric powered shuttles made of fiberglass and high density foam with linen interiors. Ooh, linen. Uh, they will be able to hold up to five passengers and a driver. Although, and this is where they state, we're going to get rid of those drivers as soon as possible. Yes, um, we need we need a meat bag to hit the stop button in case something breaks. That's they're not yeah. drivers anymore. They are they're uh, monkey bu monkey button pressers is what they are. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I think that they are attempting to get this started up in Paris. Um, oh, oui, oui, gay Paris. Yes, but they have a problem that Uber does not, did not have. Uh, the not French. Only do they, well, <laughs> Uber's had quite a few problems. With that's true. That's true. So, uh, as do most people, but uh, good on them this time around. Uh, now, the problem being, of course, that Uber didn't have to build any kind of infrastructure like the cars. They just had to build an app. Yeah, there's an so, app for that. So these guys ha are trying to raise money left, right, and center because in addition to the app, they also have to design the, the vehicles themselves. Uh, they're creating specially designed docks that will serve as charging stations, and they have to deal with all sorts of uh, you know based laws and all that sort of stuff that Uber didn't give a shit about. So Yeah, because that's going to be a tough one because the, the rivers <clears throat> and canals around Paris are pretty full already with tourists. And, and uh, poo. And poo? Uh, I don't know. I peed in the Seine. That was my one thing I did when I was in Paris. I had to do that. So I've, I've peed in all the great bodies of water around the world. The Loch Ness, the Inverness, you know. Uh, so And I also peed in the Seine. So if you fall in the Seine, you'll be getting some of my DNA. So you're welcome for that. So much information I did not want to know. Hey, you started with the poo. Uh, <laughs> not my own. Oh, sure. I've seen you drunk. Mm. <laughs> Uh, so uh, good luck with that. And speaking of electricity, the UK mm. is running a, an experiment. Uh, I think we should file this under what could go wrong. Um, they're going go. to be uh, sending signals over their power lines, um, which is basically just data talking yep. about uh, what the prices are for power and uh, what the demand is, what the peak times are and things like that. So your home of home of the smartness of the future can uh, turn the lights down or turn the AC up when it's, uh, you know, when the when the electricity is cheap or <laughs> I, I, I'm yeah. currently in a house with no heater, no working heater. So I would I would I would like them to come here and turn my heater on for me. But uh, I can't see how anything could possibly go wrong with this idea. Yeah, let's let's you know, <laughs> they they played around with doing Internet access over the power grid here in the U.S. for a while and it failed miserably. Um, very interesting to see what. Yeah, it's like, OK, let's let's. Yeah, let's just give uh, the Uber drivers the nitroglycerin delivery route, too. Why not? <laughs> it's like, uh, uh, separation of church and state would be good on some of this stuff. But they're trying it, and they're saying it's working. But uh, this is in England, where there's only like 12 people anyway. So we'll see how it translates to the rest of the world. Security? Ha! All right, we are back with our friend Dave Bittner from the Cyberwire. Let's get to some security. Are we going to be scared this week, Dave? 
Uh, perhaps a little bit, but uh, not so many scary things this week. But it has been an interesting week, uh, starting off with this uh, this article that was in Motherboard. This is written by Bruce Schneier, who, of course, is a very well-known and well-respected security researcher. We love Bruce. Uh, we definitely love yeah. Bruce. Yeah, he's one of the big names in cybersecurity. And he's writing about um, the, the incident with Brian Krebs and Krebs on Security, the huge um, IoT botnet that took down Krebs on Security. Um, and this is this is a really interesting article, I thought. Um, uh, Bruce Schneier is making the point, um, sort of his take-home point, is that the only way we're going to solve this IoT problem is with regulation. What? And, <laughs> well, I, bear bear with me here. I mean, and it, it's it's not a it's not a hundred percent perfect, but um, what he's saying is that there are no regular market forces that motivate either side to fix this IoT problem. And by either side, I mean either the consumers or the manufacturers, because from a consumer's point of view, um, let's say you buy, you know, the security camera is kind of the. Uh, you know, the, the example for, for, for this sort of thing. So let's say you buy a security camera. You, uh, you know, you stick it on the side of your house to keep an eye on your dog in the backyard. Well, that security camera is doing its thing and it's sending you images on your phone and to your TV or wherever you want to do that. Um, and let's say that security camera gets compromised because you neglected to change the password. Uh, but that security camera, while it's doing its botnet stuff, it's also still sending you the images it's still doing its security camera thing. It's not like it ever goes down as a security camera. So chances are you won't ever know that it's been uh, become part of a botnet. Um, and so you aren't motivated to fix it because, first of all, you may not know. But also it, it hasn't affected the device's uh, functionality at all. That device isn't coming after any of your stuff. It's merely been conscripted into this giant botnet. And then from the manufacturer's side, they're not motivated because they're not required to do any updates to these devices. He already you know, paid some, for it, so what do they care? It's, it's, it's already been paid for. They don't. They don't have most of the time. They don't have any mechanism to push out a software update. Uh, so they've moved on to the next model. You know, chances are that security camera is going to be sitting on that wall for a decade. Um, so, uh, Schneier is making the point that what we need to, to, uh, to fill that gap is some sort of a, a regulation where either, for example, the manufacturers, you know, a first step would be they are required to make you change your password when you get to the, get the device. Uh, there could also be a situation where if we made it so that they were liable for the damages, that would motivate them to, uh, to up the security on these devices. If someone like Brian Krebs could could sue the the manufacturers of the devices that attacked his uh, his website, then that could motivate them to make changes as well. Okay, now, a, a few flaws in this in this problem here. Yeah, all right, well, go uh, on. Sure, so I, I just bought I just bought a four camera system, and it's mm -hmm. it's a no name brand from China. Right. So first off, you know these these part these are just like you know off the shelf parts that they throw together in a package, and I couldn't even tell you the name of the company I got this from. So <laughs> right. Right there, problem number one. And problem number two is how is, uh, say, Krebs wants to go after the people that own the cam or manufactured the cameras. How is he supposed to find out like wh who the camera manufacturer is if there's 100,000 cameras sending him, you know, data? And you, all it is is just, you know, it's just a flood of bits. You can't go back and ping the camera for like you can ping a website and get, you know, the version of Apache and the IP and all that stuff. Otherwise, you have to sit here and go and like track down every single IP that is coming after you. And that's just, you know, that's undoable. Yeah. I, I, yes. At that scale, it certainly is. Um, I think, you know, imagine uh, a situation kind of like uh, underwriters laboratory, right? So, you know, they are the ones who certify uh, consumer devices that they are electrically safe to use in your phone, in, in your home, you know, so you have, uh, if you buy a, I don't know, a clock radio or a, you know, a toaster oven, you know, all those things are UL listed and they have to be UL listed to be sold. So the suggestion would be that for, in order for a, a webcam, for example, to be sold in the United States, it would have to be uh, listed by whatever, you know, governing body would do that of, as being, of having a certain amount of security or certain steps in place or, or things like that. Now, uh, certainly part of the problem is, and I think, I think the, the, um, 
The flaw in, in Schneier's argument is that this is a global problem. And so, and he makes this point himself in the last paragraph of his article. He, he points out that, you know, this is, this, this would only work for a, for a domestic situation. And, and he says himself, this is a domestic solution to an international problem. And, and, you know, to your point, Jason, you bought those cameras from, you know, they came, came here on a boat from China, who knows what factory they came out of. Um, so how are, how is regulation in the United States going to stop a global flood of, of rogue IoT devices. Or Samsung Galaxy Note 7s that just explode as well. <laughs> Which, by the way, we're not certified by uh, Underwriters Laboratory, I would like to point out. Yeah, yeah. So I, 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 what I think is, I mean, I think this is really, a, a, it's, it's an article worth your time. He brings up some really interesting, thoughtful points. Um, uh, for me, the take-home for this was how both the manufacturers and the users of these devices aren't aren't motivated to really do anything about this problem. Yeah, I mean it's it's kind of sad. Um, it, the the lack of education on the consumer part is is a real issue, um, especially as as things start to flood the market. Uh, you know, we all know Apple's going to get into this, Amazon's going to get into this, Google's getting into this. Everybody that wants to keep you in their own infrastructure is going to come out with their own Internet of Things devices, and probably the best scenario for the near future is to stick with one of those and and only use their things but the price point uh, you know the cheap stuff from china that nobody knows about is always going to be uh, more attractive to people that don't want to spend the money and, and aren't concerned about the security element of the thing yeah and, right. and yeah just a case in point mm -hmm. that four camera security system i bought cost less than one nest camera yeah, well, Nest sure. priced themselves ridiculously. I mean, that's and, and the loopholes and the ways that they try to keep you within their infrastructures, i.e., you know, you had to then purchase the the uh, ongoing a subscription yeah, for, for storing <laughs> things instead of being able to just store it on your own drive or your own cloud option. Uh, it's all it's all designed to screw you, and it's creating a system that's <laughs> screwing all of us. So. Yeah. Yeah, the, the the thing that came with the cameras, I got a box that I put my own hard drive in and I can store up to, you know, however however big my hard drive is, is, is my uh, storage limit, you know? So that's, so, yeah. The takeaway really is the Internet of Things is still the Internet of shit, as we've been saying since day one. <laughs> and yeah. only getting worse. <laughs> yeah, I guess the way to say it's going to get a lot worse before it gets a lot better, I, I fear. Yes, we and, officially yeah. recommend that you do not go buy a refrigerator that has an Internet connection. <laughs> yeah, or we'll get to that. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Uh, so uh, speaking of Krebs, he's got mm. an article about uh, Microsoft and the no more pick and choose patching this week. This has been going around, but uh, now you cannot actually pick and choose which patches that you want to apply to your Windows machine, which I this... find good and bad at the same time. It, mm. it is in theory extremely good as a long time Mac or uh, as a longtime PC user and a Microsoft guy up until just about a year ago, this makes me so happy. I am on Mac now uh, because the reality, <laughs> the reality of the way that Microsoft has always rolled out these patches is if you are smart, you Google them first and you find out which ones break your fucking system because there's something in there that always does. Yep. <laughs> now that you can no longer pick and choose every time that these things come out, people are going to be going down left, right and center. That's pretty much the uh, the upside and the downside in a nutshell. Yes, <laughs> long time Windows user, I know exactly what this means for everybody. You're all screwed. Uh, well, uh, uh, coming coming from it from a, a, a long time um, app Mac user, um, and and Apple has rolled out these kind of security updates for for as long as I can remember. Um, mm -hmm. You know these sort of bundled security updates. Um, and you know Apple is even you know when you look when you look at the description of an of an Apple security update on the consumer side most of the time it just says you know fixes security problems and stability problems yep. and that's pretty much all they tell you right yes <laughs> yeah nobody really uh, goes into great detail what patches are anymore you can't you can't actually go to the Apple website and if you dig for about ten minutes you can find the list of security vulnerabilities that they fix but it, they right. they don't make it easy they do not make it easy at all. No, they don't. And, you know, I, I guess you could make the argument, you know, what percentage of people really care about this stuff? What percentage of people just care that that they just want their computer to work? Um, you know, I like like Jason said, I mean, there's two sides to this. On the one hand, I, I guess who does this benefit most? You know, from Microsoft's point of view, 
Um, this means there's going to be a lot fewer variations in system configurations than there used to be. And so that really makes it less of a headache for them of trying to track down, you know, if something's not working, trying to track down, oh, well, this person installed this patch, but not this patch, and they put this one in out of order. And, you know, so that's causing this problem. So you can see why they would, uh, why this approach would be good for them. Uh, the other upside is, too, uh, a PC that won't boot definitely cannot get hacked. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> problem solved. You, you Install the update, can't boot, done. Yeah, yeah done. Yeah, nice. <laughs> okay, well, fortunately, all of us use Mac. Uh, and hopefully someday <laughs> we'll get new Macs to buy because it's been a very long time. <laughs> Maybe later this month, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> I was hoping when Brian bought his like the next day or 31 days in, it's usually 31 days later that the uh, they come right. out with a, right. uh, a new model. When you can no longer return it. Yeah, yeah. If somebody wants to buy me a Mac, I can guarantee it'll be 31 days because it has <laughs> right. happened for the last five years. Yeah. Uh, so have you guys heard about Geophedia? Uh, no. I had not heard. No, I'd not heard about them in, before I saw this article. Uh, interesting stuff. And by interesting, I mean chilling. Yes, this is the company that was taking basically uh, data from Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook and using it to track protesters, which they then handed over to the police so the pr police could go and Hold arrest on a them. Let, let me stop you for a second, Jason. Are you telling me that all <laughs> this information that we've been putting up about ourselves out on the internet for free is coming back to bite us on the ass? <gasps> Goodness gracious me. I believe so. <laughs> Who to thunk it? Shocked. Who to thunk it? Yeah. Uh, let me post when I'm going on vacation. Whoop! I didn't need a TV anyway. Now, now uh, <laughs> I can just go to jail. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Uh, the ACLU put out a report on Geophedia, and as soon as the report came out, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook have pulled their data feeds to this company. Uh, so uh, hopefully you didn't have stock in this company because they're out of business at this point. But yeah. yeah, this is you. You post it online, you expect people can see it. Hmm. How about that? Yeah, apples? Just, I, I think that there's a there's an, some important details with this. I mean, part of what they were doing was um, the police were using this to uh, basically tag people who had outstanding warrants. So it was sort of a an easy way to if you were taking place in a in a public demonstration. Uh, you know, political demonstration, then the police could, they were even cross-referencing, um, you know, facial, using facial recognition software to cross-reference uh, social media stuff with people who have outstanding warrants and, of course, using GPS data from where people were posting. And so this would make it a lot easier for them to kind of, um, you know, round people up who who were already in trouble with the law. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think... This to me, this is another one of those examples of something that they probably could have done before, but the fact that they can accelerate the process kind of takes it to a different level, and I think you know necessitates a closer look. Right, and they were using. I mean, yeah, it's because it's one stop shopping. You set a geofence for where the protest is, and then go to town on it. So otherwise, you'd have to go and do it yourself. You know, so. But the, the data was already out there. That's the interesting thing. So, you know, it's it's one of those things where you're stupid enough that you're posting pictures of yourself <laughs> at, at, at one of these uh, these protests. If you have a warrant, stay at home, right. <laughs> stay at home, order some Amazon and, and Netflix and chill. You know, don't <laughs> go out in public if, if you're know, wanted Jason. by the man. Jason's promoting his uh, stay at home and never leave the house policy that we were discussing off air just a few <laughs> minutes ago. And like I said, we know where that ends. Bam, bam, eats you, Jason. Ah, uh, Brian, drink. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, so the, the Verge did a follow up article about this very story just, you know, the day after because uh, it gets into uh, there was uproar. How dare, you know, the government and the police use this information. Uh, but the fact is that these are just APIs and tools that are out there for anyone. And, and they kind of get into it saying, you know, if Pepsi as as a company can use these tools to find disgruntled fans of Coca-Cola, uh, why we can't make a specific law that just that just then says police can't use it. Yeah. I mean, these are just tools. They're out there. So you either have to take away the tools from everyone uh, or I don't know. You know, it's it's just a tool. 
It is just a tool, but uh, sell, yeah. selling selling access to it to law enforcement does, you know, reek of creep. But it's nothing that the cops couldn't have done themselves. Uh, how does that? I, I don't know if that necessarily reaps of creek because uh, that's basically something that you and I have plied for a living for a while. Is companies would hire us to build onto other uh, build onto APIs to get information. We this got is, paid to do this. This is true. I, I <laughs> let's. <it, laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I guess you're right. I have made a lot of money <laughs> off of building these uh, see, exact exactly. same tools. Like, you guys like are a old, couple of. Yeah, you guys only, are a couple of creeps. Yeah. The only well. <laughs> reason it gets weird is because it's being used for law enforcement, but it's been, it's used in the private sector every single day. So yeah, yeah. It's like well, oh, you're at a Coldplay concert. Do you still? <laughs> it's the same difference. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I'm here, trying here to think. Of ex- the, I'm just trying to think of a Fourth Amendment art- argument. You know, are, are there are there situations, and I'm sure you know we, there will be plenty of people who will tell us. But you know, are there situations where, because of the Fourth Amendment, there are things that are perfectly reasonable to do in commerce that, when the government does the same things, it crosses a line of it crosses some kind of surveillance line. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. No, because you're, you're it wouldn't in public. Surprise me if there was something out there. You're, well, that, yeah, you're that's posting, the thing. You're There's posting no, it to a pub. You're in public posting to a public forum on the internet that right. you signed up for to say, right. "Here, look at me. Give me my 15 you, minutes." Right. <laughs> you agreed to have your information shared via the API. Yeah. So there's no expect no expectation of privacy. Yeah, these are not private accounts. These are public accounts. So, you know, yep. we can say, we can say what we want, but I guess yeah, we're we're just as villainous as the police are on this one. Uh, the best thing that you could possibly do is give up uh, your current existing social media accounts and go sign up with Ello. Ello. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm sure the Popo are not uh, trolling Ello. <laughs> they would be the only ones. An a- <laughs> I don't believe there's an API at all that exists either. So who knows? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> So, have you guys heard about the Diffie Hellman key uh, breach this week? I think I tried to order that for dinner last night from a Thai place. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's the password Jason tried to use on his new security system. Yeah, didn't <laughs> didn't work. Didn't work. Uh, so, some cryptographers have broken basically uh, the Diffie Hellman key exchange to be able to put a trap door in it. It's based on large numbers, large prime numbers, and how they. It, it's a very technical article that uh, Ars Technica has. And I actually listened to Security Now this week with uh, Steve Gibson, and he has a really good breakdown of why this is not a big deal, which was very interesting. A lot of people were up in arms about it, but uh, he breaks it down saying, yeah, they knew that this could have happened 30 years ago, and it finally has happened. And now we're just going to move up to uh, uh, 2048 bit encryption instead of the 1024 bit. So Okay. So right. Anybody that right. was reading this, uh, it apparently <laughs> is a uh, tempest in a teapot and just looks good in the headlines. Oh, go figure. People are writing articles to make things look good in headlines. Hmm. What, what I, I liked that. in this in this article, I think, is just as a bit of perspective, is that they said with 1024 bit keys, um, uh, a tra- a um, a trap doored prime uh, uh, takes 16 million more times longer to crack. So. A, a 2048-bit key takes 16 million times longer to crack than a 1024-bit key. So they said that 6.4 times 10 to the ninth core years, processor <laughs> core years, compared with 400 core years it took for the researchers to crap, crap, huh, crap, crap. <laughs> well, they did. Sorry. And Dr. <laughs> Freud, paging Dr. Freud, um, the trap door 1024-bit prime. So... You know, because uh, you know, bit depth is is not linear; it's exponential. No, it's not, yeah. Um, we go to go to twenty forty eight, and you know, buy yourself a buy yourself a, a few a millennia. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one thing I can tell you that's still going to be happening in about two or three millennia from now is people will still be talking about Hillary Clinton's emails. Uh, <laughs> this is just more of a fun story about security because I just liked it so much. Uh, she did. You, her people used a program called Bleachbit at one point to to basically scan and you know defrag the drive so things couldn't come back. Uh, interesting side note: uh, if you go to Bleachbit site bleachbit.org, they do have a photo, a funny little photo of Hillary Clinton in the right hand corner now, so they're aware of the. <laughs> <laughs> uh, publicity that they're getting at the moment. <laughs> um, but uh, during the debates uh, and and since then, Donald Trump has been going on and on about how he acid washed uh, the emails 
and and bleached them. Um, and after the debate ended, factcheck.org reached out to his campaign to see what the hell he was talking about and what he could have possibly meant. Uh, turns out that he actually really does think that she literally used chemicals to destroy her emails. <laughs> uh, he said so in a number of speeches. In one particular one in August in Everett, Washington, Trump said this exactly. Uh, 33,000 emails that she deleted, they're gone. Not only deleted, folks, she bleached, which somebody said they had never even heard of, in a very expensive fashion, used chemicals so nobody will ever be able to see them. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can, can this be over soon? <laughs> can this really please be over soon? It, it will not be over until acid wash jeans come back in style. I'm wearing them right now. <laughs> I'm wearing my acid wash Daisy Dukes. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Grab, yeah. Him, grab him by the Daisy Dukes. <laughs> yeah, I wish I had bleach to, to get that image out of my mind. <laughs> Shake it like a Polaroid picture, baby. <laughs> uh, so uh, an ex-CIA, or I'm sorry, NSA. How did I get the CIA from NSA? Hmm. You know. Yeah, three letter three letter organizations that cannot be named. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously, the no such agency. Yep. Um, so this guy uh, has written a little tool for you if you have a mac which we all do now uh this guy's this guy's name is patrick wardle uh which is a fun name to say three times fast Uh, he's a former nsa staffer uh he wrote a little tool that you can use to tell if somebody is using your webcam and microphone even though the the green light doesn't come on i'm actually using it right now it's called oversight and uh yes it's saying that uh it uh, is active. Oh, su- surprise, I'm making a podcast and it's trying to use my microphone. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, instead of using the tape over the camera, which I always do. Um, so it's kind of like Little Snitch, which I which I recommend everybody use if you have a Mac, because it's the greatest little tool out there for telling yep. uh, what your network is doing. Um, mm-hmm. But it's free. Grab it. Open source. There you go. There's a there's a popular I- item at uh, at security trade shows. A lot of uh, a lot of people at booths give away. It's like a little little slidey door that you put over your webcam, mm-hmm. um, so you can slide it back and forth. You know, so you don't have to have tape being put on and off. It's just a clever little gadget. I actually have one. I'm, I'm looking at it right now on my Mac. I've never uh, that had does one nothing that closed though. I need I yeah. need your brand because all the ones I got I went to I went to DerbyCon I got like five of them and none of them would work on my MacBook Pro it just it wouldn't oh, really? close all the way yeah yeah hey, I, this I, is on a 27 inch iMac so uh, oh, there you go it, it works you know a nice big smooth piece of glass but uh, you know it does nothing for the microphone but blocks the camera well just a. Uh, We'd be remiss to not mention this because this is what I'm using. I had to update Little Snitch, and they threw in a new program of theirs called Micro Snitch, which does exactly that. It monitors and reports on any microphone and camera activity. Well, I'll be jiggered. I'm running Little Snitch as well, and I did not know that. I'm going to have to. So I am. uh, Yeah, I'm using both Little Snitch and Micro Snitch, and Micro Snitch had a heart attack as soon as I started this podcast, so I had to shut it off. (laughs) Oh, nice. (laughs) So. Well, we love Little Snitch. I mean, I'm a long-time Little Snitch user here, and it, it is sort of the the go-to tool for knowing what uh, what apps are trying to send, you know, what, what data is trying to get in and out of your machine. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it looks like Micro Snitch is a second license, so you can get the Little Snitch and Micro Snitch bundle right now. You can save 50% off on Micro Snitch and get them both for $36.90. I'd bad. recommend it. I've been using Micro Snitch for a while. It's quite cool, and it's got a groovy little icon. Can't beat that. (laughs) All (laughs) righty. All right. So I I, I, I labeled this one uh, IOT WTF. And I really (laughs) I I really think maybe that's a could be just a regular segment here for us. IOT WTF. Um, What I I caught my attention this week is that several brands, uh, Samsung and GE, among others, uh, are now selling Wi-Fi enabled enabled ovens. Ovens? Yes. Ovens. And my, my comment had, on this we was... We used to have a drop and I can't find it anymore, but it's, <laughs> you got to be shitting me. <laughs> <laughs> well, if my comment was because what could possibly go wrong with an unattended internet-enabled device capable of making fire? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, to, I mean, in their defense, I almost could understand the the usage of said thing. You know, let, sure. Let's, let's see sure. if the if the roast is ready without having to run over there. However, the the laundry app that is internet con- connected, I I'm baffled by. Um, you know, it's, <laughs> it, it it runs until it's done, and then you go get your laundry out. Right. I don't need to check in on anything here. 
Yeah, yeah. my my uh, the last uh, washer dryer that my mother got, the 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 pair are networked together, and my thought was, what could they possibly have to say to each other? You know, there's the washing machine say, hey, you know, dryer, brace yourself. There's a load of towels about to be sent over. You know, like what do what do they have to say to each other? But um, <laughs> but in terms of the in terms of the ovens, um, you know, I, I was digging into this to try to see what exactly are these ovens capable of and not capable of doing. It seems like you can uh, fire up the oven. Uh, it doesn't look preheat like you, to three fifty. There you go. Doesn't oh. look like you can fire up the burners. You can you can get a status report on the burners. Um, you can turn anything off that you want to. You can get a status report on anything, but it seems like you can only fire up the oven, uh, which, you know, from a safety point of view makes sense because the oven, you know, the oven, oven's a metal box. So if that's the thing that's you know least likely to go wrong. However, however, my, <laughs> my concern is, you know, what is inside of this box that's enabling all these things? Software. Mm -hmm. So this device is connected to what? The Internet. So someone figures out a way to get in and rewrite the firmware so that, you know, you can't you can fire up whatever you want on this device. And, you know, lazy me, I go to work in the morning and I leave that uh, that pizza box sitting on the on the oven, uh, you know, because I was tossing slices of pizza in the microwave the night before. And uh, I go to work and someone hacks my oven and fires up the burners on the on the oven. And now I got a, a pizza box on fire, you know, sitting on my on my oven. So worst case scenario, but, uh, but completely seems... plausible. It, well, it is. I mean, that's the, that's the crazy thing. It is, it is completely plausible. And you can so... hook it up to Alexa. So somebody sitting outside your window can say, Alexa, burn my house down. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I did notice that as well. Someone you gotta outside be... could yell inside the house just to activate your oven. You got to be really careful with the, with the Alexa and playing the talking heads burning down the house because. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well played. Oh so, yeah. yeah. No, no, stop this, people. Stop, stop. <laughs> oh. What are we going to do? At the library. <laughs> so, I got me some new books. Okay. Uh, Washington, A Life by Ron Chernow. Somebody's yeah. been listening to Still Untitled, the yes. Adam Savage Project. <laughs> the funny thing is, I bought that book about two years ago, and I hadn't listened to it yet because it's 40 hours long. <laughs> right. Uh, I'm about eight hours into it, and then I needed a break for a bit. So I switched over to Spaceman, an astronaut's unlikely journey to unlock the secrets of the universe by Mike Massimino. Okay. And uh, I binge listened to that the entire thing yesterday because I was stuck under the covers in bed, not feeling well and uh, needed some some entertainment. And what a great book that is. I really, 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 really enjoyed that book. OK, cool. Yeah, I, I talked before about uh, Chris Hadfield's book, um, yeah. which was also fantastic. This is slightly different because mm -hmm. it, 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 it's kind of the same journey, you know, from start to finish. <laughs> from not being an astronaut to being an astronaut to not being an astronaut. Uh, but it's completely different because his story about uh, being an astronaut working on the Hubble was right. really fascinating and all the problems they had with getting that thing fixed. But I can't recommend this enough. And uh, fortunately, next month I get to interview him on uh, my day job. So that'll be fun. Nice. I actually listened to a book. What? I know. I did it your style. What? What? Uh, <laughs> I figured I should at some point. Um, I listened to Daddy Stop Talking and Other Things My Kids Want But Won't Be Getting by Adam Carolla. Oh, now, my I God. Haven't been, <laughs> I haven't been listening to his podcast in a while, which is helpful because basically 75% of any of his books is just recycled material from his podcast. It was funny. It was fine. It was kind of nice to just have a straight up narrative of a book instead of him going on 10 gazillion tangents and it's his own voice. So I was used to it. So obviously he reads his book well. And like he says, apparently, you know, compared to the written one, because he doesn't write or read, um, he rambles on and on and there's a lot more content in his audiobooks than there are in the actual printed written ones. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I've noticed that from, from some of his other books that I bought. Um, surprisingly, I did start listening to his show again. And oh, really? uh, yeah. I was running out of stuff. I, I subscribed to 70 podcasts and I found myself out of things to listen to <laughs> this week. So I, I popped it back up because we'll be talking about another one of his shows shortly. But uh, I, I, I think he's toned down a bit. 
He, he seems to have toned down a bit. That's what I've heard as well. He's not quite as cranky. So I, I guess he goes back and forth with Dr. Drew on whether he should be going to therapy or not. So he must be back in. Could be. Could be. Yeah. Because yeah. I listened to maybe like six shows in the past uh, like two, three weeks. And mm-hmm. he's definitely because before I would finish the show and I would just feel anger and hatred towards the world. <laughs> and now yes. I'm like, I chuckle a lot. And I'm like, oh, that was actually pretty good. So, you know, maybe it's worth picking back up if uh, you're looking for something to listen to. I will check it out again, maybe. Um, let's see. And the, because I did that and because you love your audiobooks so much, I did read an article in Salon that I've linked to in the show notes that talks about how the uh, how audiobooks are basically saving the book publishing world because uh, people still aren't buying book, real books much at all. Uh, people aren't buying ebooks too much at all. Uh, but people are buying audiobooks. So how about there that? you go. How about that? <laughs> I still like to read, so uh, enjoy that. I don't. Um, <laughs> I, I am reading a couple Tony Hawk books at the moment, the the physical books, but uh, I prefer the audio books. I honestly do. It, it as and as you pointed out, which I thank you still again for, is that uh, it makes no difference if you listen to it or read it. The information gets into your brain all the same. Yes, it does. Software, apps, and gadgets. I got a whole bunch of apps this week. Okay. Um, You, sir, are now on Macintosh, so I think this one is going to be uh, good for you. Okay. Airmail. Okay. I've been using, because all of my accounts are basically Gmail-based. And for that reason, I've been using Mailplane 3, which is like a $45 app, I believe. It's not cheap, but all it does is run multiple instances of Safari in one window so you can just tab between your different accounts. And it does a couple other things, but uh, basically all it is is a wrapper for Safari, right? Okay. Uh, yep. Huge memory hog. I checked it the other day and it was using 1.3 gigabytes of RAM. <laughs> That's a lot of RAM. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> so uh, Jordan Harbinger, my boss over at the Art of Charm, said, hey, check out Airmail. That's what he's been using. And uh, I'm like, Ugh, another app that I got to go check out. But I went and checked it out. And uh, Interface much better beautiful interface as a matter of fact and i loves me some beautiful interfaces 9.99 or 9.95 probably i don't think they do 9.99 on the iStore because <laughs> i don't think no. they like things that are odd <laughs> um, uh so i bought it for the the mac they didn't have a trial version so i had to you know bite the bullet and just go for it but for 10 bucks it's you know well worth yeah. the try if if it sucked then i would still be able to bitch about it on the show <laughs> and uh so i tried it Got all my accounts uh, set up in it, all like six of them, and uh, it's amazing. And it has a unified inbox, too. So Mm -hmm. instead of switching tabs, going from account to account to account to account, um, Mm -hmm. everything's in one inbox. Right. Totally customizable. Now, here's the fun part. You can Mm -hmm. save your configurations to iCloud, and then when you spend $5 and get the iOS version that works on your phone and your iPad, Mm -hmm. um, then you can just import them from iCloud. Okay. Easy breezy cover girl. Yeah, uh, nice. Um, easy breezy, beautiful cover girl. You can't forget <laughs> that beautiful. Uh, you do have to put your password back in when you uh, pull them up on iOS, which is good. I can't can't uh, no, complain can't about that. that. Yeah, and since I have one password on my iPad and my iPhone, it was just a matter of a couple minutes to get everything set up, and I love it. I am in love with this app. It is. It's made my life so much easier because <laughs> I right. switched over to Inbox for Gmail a while ago. And what Inbox for Gmail doesn't have is uh, unread notifications like you do with Gmail. Like, yeah, I can have it pop up on the tab, like how many unreads I have. But for Inbox, I was actually spending more time using the Inbox app on iOS to go from account to account to account to account to figure out what fucking email I haven't read yet that the little round uh, red thing was showing up on my icon. Drove me right. nuts. This one, fantastic. I am I am such a fan of Airmail. They have my $15, and it, it's a bargain at twice the price. Well, I will take a look at it because, as I've mentioned to you many times, the two biggest annoyances I've had switching over to be all Mac and getting away from my PC was QuickBooks, which is not really solved. I've just learned to not despise it as much as I should um, <laughs> and and the Mac Mail program. I hate Mac Mail. Oh, it's terrible. So, it's so it's I will, awful. I will uh, take a quicker look at this and maybe uh switch over to it this weekend yeah give it a sh- it, t- it takes no time at all to switch over and it, it even uses your hillary clinton email server since uh you run your own still 
Like that's uh, right, I do. So I can, you know, chemically bleach it later. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> uh, I've talked about Paziz on the show before. It is my favorite sleep app. Uh, they have released a new version finally. Um, okay. Unfortunately, here's the problem with the new version. Yep. Um, it requires a subscription. I uh, screw that. Uh, five bucks a month. What? Five bucks a month for a sleep app. That's um, not worth it. It's annoying. It is really annoying. It's got a bunch of new features. It's got a female voice now. It's got a whole bunch of new stuff in it. But I'm sorry. Paziz, in the old days, was I have paid for every version of Paziz from the original Mac version, which was about $100, um, right. every iOS version, with the upgrades for all the modules, everything. And now they want $5 a month? That's insane. It is insane. I am really upset about it. You can use the uh, classic version, I think, because I, I tried out the $5 version, and like, half of me was just like, I love the app. I want to support them. I will do the, they have the option, you know, to pay yearly, which is less, you know, it always comes out a little bit less. You save like 15 or 20%. But then, I, and then you know, my <laughs> my better, the better working portion of my brain said, are you fucking, re- you're not going to pay that for a sleep app? No, try it out for five bucks and then, you know, make fun of them from there and figure it out and see if they reverse their position. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, got a new interface, which doesn't matter because it's a sleep app. I don't care if you have pretty pictures while I'm falling asleep because my phone is going to be off. You dumb fucks. (laughs) Talk to me. Play the music. Do the thing that you do well. I don't care what pretty pictures you put on the screen. Um (laughs) So anyway, yeah, it's a it's a massive disappointment for one of my favorite apps of all time. So um, I'm really bummed I got rid of the old version because the old version worked great. I'm going to have to go back and figure out how I can uh, backtrack to get uh, the last version if I can even do it. Well, maybe you should sleep on it first. I will do my best. Um, so <laughs> my next one is uh, firewalltrump.com. Yes. This one is 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 getting more and more exciting because what it is is it is this is the reason that there is poop all over our show notes. Yes, I've noticed that. <laughs> because it's a Chrome extension that turns the word Trump into a pile of poop. And they seem to be updating it as I scroll because now the poop has changed. It used to be the straight poop emoji and now it's a very happy poop with uh, blue eyebrows for some reason. Yeah, I saw that too. It's very it funny. It just changed while I was looking at it. How random <laughs> is that? Um, it's free. It's funny because I am sick to death of this election cycle. And um, anything that can put a smile on my face during this travesty that we have going on right now makes and it's free. Just get it. Go get it, it. It's free. It's free. It's fun. Yeah. It's probably stealing all my personal information in the background. Uh, and and selling, sending it to Trump. And, yeah. And, well, it's probably sending it to the Mexicans so they can sell it because they got to pay for that fucking wall. Um, That's right. Yeah, that's how they do it. Um, okay, I got three apps in a row here. These are going to be go go real quick. Overcast, Pocket Casts, and Downcasts. Those okay. are Downcast. Those are the three podcast apps that I've been using for ages. Um, Pocket Cast is the newest one that I've been trying. I bought it a long time ago. I didn't like the interface, but I thought everybody's saying that the new version is much better, so I tried it out for the last week and a half um, mm-hmm. because they finally put in the strip silence option that Overcast has had. Mm-hmm. It's terrible. The interface is god awful. Multiple clicks to get anything done. Um, the only thing that they have going for them that Pocket Cast, or I mean, that Overcast doesn't have is discoverability. They have a mm-hmm. much better uh, discoverability option because Overcast is Marco Arment's little dictatorship where he puts in whatever he thinks is great and never <laughs> updates it. Um, so for discovery, Pocket Casts is okay, not not the best. Downcast is the one I always used to go to because it's the most developer friendly. Um, not the prettiest, not really even, I don't even know if it's maintained anymore. Overcast I'm going back to because as much as I think Marco's a douche, uh, he wrote a good app and for listening to podcasts, that is hands down the best way to consume them. But this coming from a guy who, uh, listens to a lot more podcasts than you do. That's true. And not, not, not just you, Brian, I'm talking to you, the <laughs> listener, everybody that <laughs> listens to this show, I listen to more podcasts than you. And that is my, uh, my go-to app. So give it a shot. Right. Okay. <sighs> even 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 your baby agrees. I can hear him in the background. I, I know it's it's not been a good day here in Babyland. Mm. Um, but maybe I should also get, no, Babyland. Gonna... Babyland was a great band. They were a great band. I do miss them. I wonder what happened. Uh, there is an app that uh, will uh, basically uh, notify your family members and the authorities if your phone detects you're in an accident. How does that work? 
Uh, I don't know. Life360, a social network geared toward family members. I have not seen this yet. Uh, has partnered with driver safety and analytics app ZenDrive and created a driver safety feature that is now available to the 55 million families that are using Life360. It is called Driver Protect. And uh, basically, it uses things, technology in your phone, like accelerometers and gyroscopes, to detect if there's been an accident. I'm guessing there's a lot of false positives there. Uh, it could be, could be. Um, yeah. yeah, that'll be interesting. I, I don't know anything about this. I'll have to look at it. But there's a there's a eight dollar a month subscription fee. I know. Well, of course, there is. Yes. Yeah, you so. know, they came free with my car. Yeah. Uh, as soon as I pair my phone to my car, yes. it has uh, a nine eleven sync option. Mm-hmm. So as soon as you pair any Bluetooth phone to your to my Ford Escape, um, if I'm trying to make a fast escape and I run into a tree, it will call nine one one for me, and I don't have there to do anything unless the phone dies in the accident along with me. And at that point, I don't care. Right. Well, the reason that these people are doing this is they see something a little bit further down the line. The real opportunity from this partnership is uh, insurance. It's gathering information for a different model for insurance Mm. based on usage. So they're basically allowing yourself to be tracked everywhere you go and everywhere you drive. Yeah, you can just get that from Geico now. They've got the little plug that goes into the the auxiliary yep. port and uh, will knock your knock your uh, build down or up depending on how big of a douchebag you are when you drive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, do you remember uh, Richard Clarkson's floating cloud sculpture? We talked Vaguely. About, we talked about it on the show a long time ago and I sw- I couldn't find it in the notes. It might have been something that we cut. But right. uh, now he's got a uh, hypoallergenic felt cloud that okay. floats on a magnetic base with mm-hmm. with lights inside that is a speaker. Okay. Did you watch the video for this? I did. I think it's cool as shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's cool. I, you know, it's never going to work in my house. <laughs> no, no, well, well, it, it certainly won't work in my house either. <laughs> I would have to put it like, you know, on an eight foot shelf to keep, uh, keep yeah. a little pause from it. Same with you. Um, yeah. I swear to God, though, that thing is cool as can be. I'm just like. I, that's neat. I love the like the lights inside to give it the thunderstorm look. I don't like the colored lights. I like the white lights. I thought the white lights were cool, but the colored yeah, lights. The, the white little, lights are yeah. way cooler. And we definitely need a new category on the show. Jason thinks this is neat. I, I, it is. It's neato time. Neato mm-hmm. time with Jason DeFilippo. <laughs> <laughs> what I don't think is neat, though, is sound by human. Yes, I saw this. It's just this is ridiculous. Um, somebody has watched uh, The Empire Strikes Back too much and the scenes from Cloud City with the guys with the big <laughs> earphones and earbuds. Lobot. Lobot. Uh, yeah, these are over the ear, uh, basically headphones that you literally suck onto the outsides of your ear. Mm-hmm. They do a bunch of stuff. Uh, they've got uh, translators in them. They've got speakers. And you can rub your ear gently to make the sound go down. It is a very creepy touch motion that this guy is doing in the video. He's like, oh, and rubs his own ear. And I'm just like, it It seriously looks like he's masturbating with the other hand when he touches his ear. It is creepy as can be. Um, they are overfunded, so you probably will never get one by the time these are ready, which won't be for another year. Yeah. And yeah, I, this has so many things I don't need or want in headphones, uh, including a video of nearly naked people wearing them. Mm hmm. That's what I'm saying. Where's your other hand, dude? Where's your other hand? (laughs) Yeah. Dumb. Media Candy. Rogue One, the new trailer is out. Have you watched it yet? I watched it this morning. The cheese is strong with this one. Is all I got to say. I like it. I, I like loved it. it. I know. I okay. loved it. But come on. The end where they're doing all the, the motivational locker room speeches. That shit was it's, cheesy. That shit was Star cheesy. Star Wars. What do you expect? Uh, it, it, it looks like act, the best Star Wars movie ever made. I'm going to give you that. But yeah. it was just cheesy at the end. <laughs> well, I, I, I like the revelation. And if you watch the trailer, this is not exactly a spoiler alert. They tell you, I don't like the revelation that, you know, it's the main character's dad that is actually building the damn thing under duress. <laughs> she now, should be I, a stripper, not a, I know. Know, she's, she's got, got daddy, daddy issues. issues. Yeah. She should be in the, you know, and with the, with the fets or not the fet. Yeah. Ju- the, the huts. She the should huts. be dancing in some huts place. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't care for that. They didn't need to be connected. That's just stupid Star Wars bullshit that you have to throw in. But yeah, this looks like the best Star Wars movie we'll have seen in a long time. It's it's great. It looks fantastic. It's got a different feel. It's a war movie. It should be fun. Yeah, no, definitely looking forward to this one. 
Yeah. Uh, I was a huge fan of Says You. It was one of my favorite uh, shows that was on um, on NPR game shows. Uh, unfortunately, the main guy, Richard Schur, passed away, I believe, two years ago now. Ah, um, I was going to ask if it was canceled, and apparently God canceled it. Well, yeah. Well, God <laughs> didn't <laughs> Wow. Well, it's back, Jason. It has risen from the dead. <laughs> ah, zombie says you. <laughs> Continue with that analogy. So they are back. They're they're doing the show with uh, one of the guys that was on the panel is now the main host. Uh, and they have finally <laughs> made it actually easy to get the show. It is an app with a one-time purchase of 99 cents, and all the new episodes will go right in there. So it's fantastic. I'm very happy. Ah, we should do that. It's hmm. an incredible deal. For 99 <laughs> cents, you can get all this stuff for free. So... Yes, yes, yeah. A Patreon, ninety nine cents, please. Actually, one dollar. Yeah, you can't do ninety nine cents anymore, but we'll take a dollar, pretty please. We'll take a buck. We'll send you a penny in the mail. Um, no, we won't. <laughs> that is, <laughs> I ran that by the lawyers, and we cannot send a penny in the mail. Um, okay. Jim Henson's Fraggle Rock is returning to HBO, and I, for one, am terribly excited. I would be curious to see if you you should do this with your show, uh, if it has legs. I yeah. remember loving Fraggle Rock as a child. I am not sure how I will feel about it now. See, I loved it as a teenager. So okay. I didn't watch it when I was a kid kid. I watched it when I was a little bit grown or upper. So right. it in the jokes, what I remember were more adulty than than you'll remember. So that's why I'm, I'm hoping that it I'm really hoping that it holds up. They're doing a remaster on it. So it'll look good. Um, yeah. I'm really, I'm, my fingers are crossed for this one. I really am. Cause you know, as much as I hate Brian Henson, I love Jim Henson. <laughs> His dad was <laughs> awesome. Brian's a dick, but, uh, fingers are crossed for this one that, uh, they can bring it back in its uh, original splendor. And will there be plans to make new ones? Nope. Not, not yet. I'm sure if it, right. if it makes money, if it does well, they'll have to. Yeah, yeah they'll have to. Cause I don't know what okay. uh, the Hensons are up to at this point. Um, probably making more Muppet movies, but I was interesting. I was listening to John Favreau on the recode podcast today, and he was talking about some of his VR stuff. Mm -hmm. And for some reason it popped in my head, a labyrinth VR world would be awesome. Okay. I, are you not a fan of the movie labyrinth? Not a huge fan. Oh, uh, really? It had Bowie yeah. in it. You, you, I mean, he's the one of the only celebrity this year that we didn't kill. <laughs> Oh, wait, no, we did kill him. We no, killed, we killed him. We, we didn't killed kill him. Abe Vigoda. We killed Bowie. We didn't kill Abe Vigoda. <laughs> uh, okay, so, well, either way, I thought that would be a fun thing. Okay. Um, Planet Earth, uh, favorite yes. of stoners everywhere. Planet yes. Earth 2 is coming out. The trailer looks amazing. Uh, it does. We'll link to that in the show notes. I, I am a fan, and now that I have a 4K TV, I'm really looking forward to it. All right. You're not that a, makes sense. Not a fan? Not Not looking forward to it? I don't have a 4K TV. But you can still watch it on your HD TV and it'll still be. I, I am a fan. I, okay. I enjoyed Planet Earth 1. Okay. I just hope they don't have. <laughs> uh, I hope they stick with the original. Like, you know, you have to have Attenborough doing the voiceover instead of the. Uh, what is it? They redid it with Sigourney Weaver and then they, they did the other one where Oprah did it. Stick with it. Oh, the, yeah. Remember, uh, I, that I, was Planet. I can, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. I can do Sigourney. I can't do Oprah. Sigourney's fine. But stick with the British. They're better. Yeah. They're better it's, at this kind of thing. It's just better. Yes. And speaking of better, the Luke mm -hmm. Cage Family Matters trailer, I thought was way better than the Luke Cage original trailer. Um, I don't know. Do you watch this? I watched it. It was very funny. I was cracking up. I'm like this. I don't know how they got so many happy scenes out of Luke Cage where people are smiling and laughing and it, it's really good. It, I yeah. highly recommend going to our show notes, which will be grumpy old slash 181 and checking it out if you haven't seen and it already. And as far as I can tell, there's no uh, no spoilers in there because I'm still only like four episodes into the show and there's nothing that really no. this gave gave anything away. No so spoilers at all. Yeah, it's it's just the yep. credits. It's honestly yep. just the credits. Yep. And finally, uh, our favorites from the upcoming Grand Tour, Clarkson, Hammond and May, were on Adam Carolla show. And I went back and listened to this as well. It was a one on one, which is I was kind of bummed out about. I always like it when he has got the guests with uh, with the whole crew. But uh, they were funny. Um, uh, you know, Corolla really tried to get stuff out of them and they were having none of it. Um, yeah, that, show, I thought that was really, I thought, I thought Clarkson handled it deftly. Like yes. he very, he, I mean, he deflected everything that Corolla threw at him about like, are you pissed off? Are you this? He's like, we were making our show, man. We don't, yeah. who cares? That was a long time ago. Now we're here. We're not yep. there anymore. <laughs> yeah. It went really, really well. It was good. And I can't wait to everything that they said about the grand tour has me quite excited. 
Me too. I can't wait. I yeah. wish it started now. Uh, the interesting thing I did find out, though, we were talking about the binging options with it. They are not doing that. They're not doing it. They're not I'm doing happy. it. Yeah. I'm happy as a clam about that. At, now that I've been watching Westworld every week, like, you know, as it's dribbling out, I find myself more excited about the show that I have to wait. <laughs> it gives you time to think about it, to contemplate. Not that there's going to be anything to think about with the Grand Tour, but uh, there's something to be said for anticipation. Yeah. 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 Fuck this instant gratification generation. Having said that, we're going to drop all 52 episodes of Grumpy Old Geeks on December 31st. The web's not dead! Oh no, it's not! On a list of things that I had no idea about and now... Strangely, I find uh, a sense of satisfaction that I do. Uh, Lifehacker once again came up with something useful. Uh, the chart for every vacuum cleaner attachment you own and what you should be using it for. Oh, really? Yes, as opposed to me who just doesn't use any of them and sticks the nozzle into the places. <laughs> that's what she said. So that's how you end up with a kid, Jason. I don't know if you were aware of that. Yes, yes. That's why I don't have one because I read the instruction manual. <laughs> oh, okay, so there you go. It's, uh, yeah. Things I did not know, and the more you know. Um, secondary, uh, this I'm a Disney guy. I grew up next to it. It was the first place I ever worked. I had annual passes all of my life. Uh, it's been doing the rounds that the Disney Tower of Terror is closing. Yep. And some somebody feels very strongly about it because the article title is Disneyland's Tower of Terror is Closing. This is a national tragedy. No, it's not. <laughs> Spoiler <laughs> alert. No, it's not. <laughs> Uh, I'll, the link is in the show notes. It's a, it's a lovely article uh, uh, that gets kind of metaphysical about what the, the tower of terror could mean and means to her. Uh, it's very funny. Um, and sadly in place will be an imagineered new attraction called guardians of the galaxy. Yes, so, but it looks very cool. Have you seen the video about, uh, what they've done with the ride? It's pretty I cool. I don't like changes to my Disney. Well, then you shouldn't like California Adventure Fuckland or whatever it's called because that was a big change that brought us the Tower of Terror, which is crap. So... I like the Tower of Terror. It was a good ride. Uh, what I have heard is the reason that that is not continuing is they the license that they had for the Twilight Zone has ended and it's too expensive to renew. Like, Disney doesn't have enough money to renew a license. Come on. That doesn't mean they want to spend it. Uh, they should just buy the rights to Twilight Zone and be done with it. But yes. anyway, um, and it is uh, it's we're coming up on election time and I got my uh, 266 page California state proposition books the other day, um, which I suppose I'm going to have to read and figure out how I want to vote on, on all these different propositions. Uh, but a friend of the show sent me a link to uh, basically all of them in haiku form. OK, <laughs> it's quite lovely. Proposition 62. Vote for this one if you want to eliminate the death penalty. Okay. 66. If you want the state to execute more people, this one is for you. <laughs> <laughs> Proposition 65. Plastic bag makers. Put this one on the ballot to punish grocers. <laughs> Fucking grocers. Proposition 58. Kids learning English won't need a waiver to take bilingual classes. It's all I, good. It tells you exactly what each one is in a little haiku. Okay. That's, since I don't live in California, I'm cutting you off now. We're done. <laughs> okay. All right. Are you kidding me? Love it. Since Brian can't figure out how fucking hackpad works, let's move on to the face cradle. God damn it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I want to I want to do many things to your face. Cradling is not one of them. Yeah, same same here. Okay. Uh, we'll deal with it. We'll deal with you after the show, little mister. Um just hang up. <laughs> So I found a Kickstarter that we, oh, mm, yeah, this is just the, the craziest thing I've ever seen. It is, you know, those little uh, neck pillows that you get at the airport. Yes. Mm -hmm, yeah. The ones that we talked about on the show that have the sticker on it or the, the mm -hmm. tag that says do not use for sleep. Yes. Uh, well, now you can get a toilet seat that you can put around your face and hook it to a chair and look like a flying corpse. Right. <laughs> I, I, it, it's at facecradle.me. And there's a video that will be in the show notes. Uh, I highly recommend you go watch it if you are a traveler and want to okay. really see how things uh, are, are 
devolving in the world of travel comfort. Okay, mode number four, the deep sleep mode, which involves the strap that you put around the back of your chair. That's the one. (laughs) I'm just saying if there is a five-year-old child that is sitting behind you, uh, when you are in deep sleep mode, uh, they will unhook you and you will be face planting into chair and probably <laughs> breaking face. Yes, there will be there will be broken nose involved. And not in a million years would I ever do that. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, and I mean, granted, that one you could you could lower the tray, put your cocktail on it with a straw <laughs> and just sit there. Look like you're hanging yourself and having your cocktail while you contemplate all the mistakes you've made in your life. <laughs> but <laughs> Mistake number one being that you bought the face cradle to begin with. Yes. This is an Australian product, so you have to buy it in Aussie dollars, but it is, I don't know. What have we come to? Sad. Closing shout outs. Happy birthday to fan and friend of the show, MXV, who turns uh, 67, I believe, on Friday. So. I thought he'd be 33 and a third. Oh, uh, he's at vinyl, least vinyl jokes. He's at uh. least 45, but maybe 72. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, good man. And uh, shout out to my friend Joey Ito. Uh, we we mentioned before that he interviewed President Obama about for the yes. new episode of Wired, but the yes. video is out now. OK, cool. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool seeing my buddy sitting there. Uh you know, slack John with the president. And even there's at one point where, where Obama says, I'm going to defer, defer to Joey because he's the expert. And I'm just like, damn, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty cool. I like it when my friends are cooler than I am, which is basically everybody. I was about to say that's a short bar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good yeah. thing. You're not mm-hmm. my friend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I uh, really don't have much in the way of shout outs other than uh, let's go Dodgers. Uh, they're about to play. But by the time you hear this, they'll either have uh, won and moved on or they'll have lost and I'll be miserable. Oh, you're going to so. be miserable because the Cubs are going to take the pennant this year. Well, it will be playing the Cubs if we win the game today. So we'll ah, see. well, that would be interesting. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling that the, the Cubs are going to do it. They're doing pretty yeah. good. Yeah, I think they had their window. It had to be last year, so it worked with the Back to the Future movies. Yeah, that would have been great. That would have been great. Yeah. I just don't... I, I'm going to go on vacation. <laughs> if they're, <laughs> I'm Seriously, I do not want to be in Chicago when the Cubs yeah, win. Yeah, should probably get out of Chicago. And yeah. also, I was, I was chatting with my, my stepmom who works at an old folks home, and there are people mm-hmm. that are literally like hanging on for dear life because the Cubs are finally there. They're like, I've lived 98 years, and this is going to be it. The day after the Cubs win, there are going to be so many, so many vacancies in all the old <laughs> folks homes around Chicago because they're like, oh, I can die now. <laughs> Jesus, how morbid but I funny know. and probably true. It's completely true. All right. Thanks for listening. I'm Jason DeFilippo, and you can check me out at jpd.me, where you can find links to all my social media and contact info if you'd like to hire me for all your podcast editing or producing needs. And I'm Brian Schulmeister, and you can follow me on Twitter at Slender Fungus. Visit patreon.com slash GOG and sign up to help support the show. Even as little as a buck a month helps keep the bandwidth, baby formula, and puppy chow flowing. If you're cheap or broke but still want to support the show, please go to grumpyoldgeeks.com slash iTunes and leave us a glowing review and five stars. At the very least, please share the show with your friends. Grumpyoldgeeks.com is where you can listen to shows, leave feedback, ask us questions that we can read on the air, and find links to our awesome sponsors and stuff we like. We're also on Twitter at GOG Podcast and on Instagram at Grumpy Old Geeks. Intro music for the show is provided by The Band Among Us. You can find them on iTunes, Spotify, and Apple Music or get 10 exclusive tracks when you sponsor us on Patreon. Outro music for the show is provided by Andy Stachansky. You can follow Andy at twitter.com slash houseofandy and he's also on SoundCloud at grumpyoldgeeks.com slash Andy where you can listen to this song in its entirety. Show notes for all the links discussed in this episode can be found at grumpyoldgeeks.com slash 181. The cheese is strong with this one.